Well, good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I think we have our 11 diehard um, participants. Uh, so thank you guys again for being here um, tonight. I appreciate it. I'm not going to keep you real long because obviously we are finishing up the course. And I sure don't want to... Um, you know, give you anything new or anything like that at this point. So I just wanted to kind of go back and reiterate a few points that hopefully uh, you think uh, will help you with your final uh, and then um, answer any questions that you have. So like I said, tonight we're not going to be real long unless you guys, you know, we can take the whole hour if you want to, but I figured I'd give you some time back since you blocked an hour to maybe actually work on the final uh, and get it done and, and complete it. Um, so just a reminder that, you know, a critical part of an effective PLC are the classroom walkthroughs. Uh, you know, and I know that there's so many different people out there who just feel like that maybe that's not a great idea, uh, you know, that it's going to upset teachers or that it's evaluative in nature. But it is a really critical piece because, you know, I think I, I put this in, in somebody's comments maybe. Um, you know, we have to be sure that the curriculum that we're intending um, to be taught is actually being taught in the classroom. And a classroom observation is really the only sure way you have of doing that. Uh, you can look at lesson plans, you can look at student work, those are important elements, but you know, it, what really matters is what's going on in that classroom in front of students. So one way that you can make it very, very non-threatening, and um, again, I think I shared this as a resource, but my favorite classroom walkthrough form um, that we used was very, very simple. It started off, and number one, what did we observe? So, you know, you literally write down the facts. The teacher was working a math problem on the board. The students were seated at their desk, and they were copying the problem on into their notebooks. So you're very literal. It is exactly what you see. Then the next one is, um, the next question or the next part of it is wonderings. And we always made sure we use that word. So it's something like you just wanted more information. So, you know, it might be, I'm wondering why you started with um, a two-digit addition problem um, with regrouping. You know, and, then, and that's just an opportunity then for the teacher in a team meeting or some, uh, some other time to come back and say, well, you know, because they've already mastered it, uh, two-digit addition without regrouping, so now we're ready to move on to this. But it's things that you just want more information about. Not like I'm, you know, and please don't say anything like, you know, I'm wondering why you um, didn't have your lesson plan today. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, so it's not a got you. Um, it's something you genuinely want to know more information about. Okay, then the last part is one idea that you're going to either use or implement in your classroom or share with another teacher or something. Uh, you know, it's kind of like with students. We always want to find at least one positive thing, even in the worst classroom situation. Um, so we want to reinforce that. Then what we would do is after we, you know, we always did, um, like when our PLC met, we would always go and do a walkthrough of anywhere between three and five teachers. That was something we did every single week, and they're quick. You know, we didn't spend more than five or ten minutes in a teacher's classroom. We're not camped out in there for 45 minutes. You can tell pretty quickly in that five to ten minute observation what's going on. We would then compile all of that into a letter to the principal or out to, we actually did ours to the faculty. We always shared our PLC walkthrough um, results with everybody in the campus. But we left it very generic. So it said, today we walked through three classrooms or five classrooms. Um, the teachers were teaching and we would just list the content, you know, math, science, social studies, whatever. Then we would list the observations. We did not include the teacher's names. We listed what our wonderings were, and then, it's, and then we also included those great ideas, and that's where we did list the teacher. So it's like, if you really want to know how uh, to teach sentence diagramming, you need to go see Miss So-and-so. She is the master at it. Or if you really want to see how to um, ask high-level questions in your classroom, you've got to go see so-and-so. So we did reinforce that really positive piece. Then the last thing that we added to that letter was staff development implications. So I'll give you an example. Um, we were doing some PLC walkthroughs when I was a high school principal. And um, every classroom we went to, and we went to English, social studies, and science this particular day. But we noticed that everybody was teaching vocabulary. 
And everybody kept having wonderings about the vocabulary that was, you know, being taught. And what we started to realize was that nobody was teaching vocabulary A the same way. So kids were learning vocabulary with 10 different strategies. But most importantly, none of the strategies they were using were effective. You know, we were getting things like, here's your vocabulary list on Monday, and so go home and write the definitions, and then use it in a sentence on Wednesday for your homework, and then on Friday you have a quiz. That is not the most effective way to teach vocabulary to kids. So our professional development was very clear for us. So we knew we needed to do some capacity building with our faculty on vocabulary and how to help kids grow their vocabulary and to meet that. The other thing that I want to just mention to you in terms of a classroom walkthrough is we always did a hallway debrief. So if you have however many people on your PLC teams, mine were usually three to five people, we would literally just do a round robin. So as soon as we walked out of a classroom, everybody would read their observations, everybody would read their wonderings, then everybody would read their, their kudo or their, you know, the, the great thing that they wanted to take away, and then we would discuss. And again, it wasn't about the teacher, it was usually about our wonderings. You know, like I'm wondering why, and, and you know, somebody else who may teach math or something on our team may say, oh, well, it's because blah, blah, blah. But that, that conversation was really, really important. And if you're leading a PLC, that is a wonderful opportunity for you to model and show the rest of the team how we can look critically at instruction and it not be about the personality or the individual teacher. Because remember, we're looking at this systemically to make sure that A, the curriculum um, that we're, we're, you know, that's written and we're using is being taught, that our assessment is lined up with it, that we are training and moving our teachers forward and giving them the support and help they need in the areas where maybe we're struggling as a campus or as a school um, around those critical high level objectives. So, you know, this is a real, like I said, it's kind of scary, it's kind of threatening if you've never done it, but I think it can be really, really helpful. And I'm reading over here from, um, from Anna that um, the principal started uh, classroom walkthroughs and teacher walkthroughs. Um, and then they're planning to do these in the future. That's awesome. Um, you know, and if you want to, honestly, I don't know what your relationship is with your principal, but um, the protocol that I just gave you uh, came out of the University of Pittsburgh and the Institute for Learning. Uh, and um, I know it's been adopted and used by a lot of school districts. So it is research-based. And, um, you know, like I said, it's not just something that we made up. We did, we did steal it shamelessly from Dr. Lynn Resnick's Institute for Learning. The other thing that I want you to remember too is that, you know, it's kind of like we oftentimes, we know how to teach kids really well. So we know, you know, that, that old adage, you teach a little bit, you test a little bit, uh, you know, then you teach a little bit more and then you test some more. But we somehow think as educators, when we're a part of a PLC or any other group, that we just start it and we go. And we don't ever take time to reevaluate or to look at how well the team is working, if we're on target to meet our goals, et cetera. So just like you do formative assessment with students in the classroom, you also need to do, whether you call it formative assessment or a mid-check or mid-course adjustment or whatever you want to call it, but you do need to periodically, and I would actually plan that, just kind of do a temperature check. You know, are we progressing towards our goals? Uh, you know, have we mapped those out? But if we're going to make a 20-point gain by the end of the year, um, are we able to see through data that, you know, here it is November or December, we're halfway through the year, so we should have shown at least a 10-point gain by now. So don't forget that we need to do that formative assessment piece. Also, too, um, you know, don't, um, I want you to remember as well that if you have a change in your PLC, like you get a new member or a member leaves or it's a completely new group, don't forget to take time to take a little bit of a step back, kind of like Catherine does in, in the book, Five Dysfunctions of a Team. You've got to bring that new person up to speed. Even if they're the most wonderful, great person ever, teams become like families and they form their own identities. So you've got to help the new person to catch up. And like I said, even if they're best friends with everybody on the team, they've got to understand the norms, the work, the goals, all of those pieces that you've worked so hard to build. Okay? All right. So 
final exam um, posted it yesterday and um, Jennifer I think mentioned to me in an email today that there's something weird with the discussion forum I, I, I set it up the exact same way I did every time but for some reason you can't put like parentheses and some other things in there the only thing I can figure out is um, I was out of town and I was working on my MacBook as opposed to my normal PC computer here at home or at the office and I don't know if it's just a weird Mac thing or not but um, you know, I, I won't grade you on punctuation and all that kind of stuff. Just get something up there um, so that you can have the dialogue and the discussion. Okay. Um, oh, so you're okay. So Morgan says that the district comes in and does observations. Oh, okay. We used to do that too. We would take teams, uh, we would take a, a, a team from one school to another school to do observations. Um, which is really kind of scary, uh, you know, the first couple times you do it, but it's also, we found it was the greatest way to share ideas and development and stuff like that across campuses. Oh, okay, so Jennifer was able to add some things. <laughs> um, Dr. Resnick, just do a Google search. It's Dr. Lynn Resnick. Um, Anna's asking this question. Where can I find the information on Dr. Resnick um, that I shared about the walkthroughs? Go to the, it's called the Institute for Learning. And it's from, and I'll type this in too so everybody has it. It's the Institute for Learning out of the University of Pittsburgh. And Dr. Lynn Resnick is the researcher. That might help if I would capitalize things. Okay. All right. So, final exam is posted. Uh, and I gave you three options. You are basically going to summarize everything that you learned in this course. Now, I'm not looking for a dissertation or, uh, you know, a 35-page master's thesis or anything like that. Uh, but you can let me, you can share your knowledge with me either through a PowerPoint, a video, or a formal paper. And if you have some other great idea, if you're like the best songwriter ever and you want to write a song about it, that's fine too. Um, you know, I'm open to creative options. Uh, and then I did give you 10 kind of guiding questions that I want to make sure you do cover in this. Uh, and, and some of it is honestly feedback uh, for me and, you know, because I want to make sure that I'm always improving the course and, and making this better for everybody. Uh, and um, so please, you know, just kind of follow that little script. You know, not literally, but, you know, do at least touch on those points if you would in there. Um, and if you do choose to do like a video or something like that, I'm not expecting you to be, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg or, you know, special effects and all that. Uh, but also to, do, you know, please try to uh, cover at least the content pieces and make sure that I can hear you and see you in the video um, and we don't have those kinds of issues. Okay. And um, the course officially ends on Saturday. Um, you are welcome. Um, oh, Chase says he's already turned his in. See, Chase, you're really on top of things. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just you can literally follow the script. That's fine. And, um, yeah, you don't have to wait till Saturday, but you do have technically until Sunday um, at 12.05 a.m. Um, to turn it in. Uh, that's when I shut it off. But if for something happens and you can't get it turned in, text me. I think everybody has my cell phone number. Just text me, even if it's at midnight, because I'm, I'm a night person, I'll probably still like, um, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about it. The only thing that we might come up against is I have to have grades turned in pretty quickly. We, they turn them around fast, and, um, you know, we may have to do an incomplete or something. So if something catastrophic happens, your house floods, or, you know, who knows, things can happen all the time, um, just let me know, okay? Um, no, you don't have to upload anything. I'm sorry, I, I forget y'all. I need to read the questions for some of you. Does this need to be uploaded to TaskStream? No. Um, I hate TaskStream, um, and our new department chair is not a big fan either, so I think we're actually going to move to a new system called Qualtrics. So we're not sure if we're uploading things to TaskStream or not, but what I'm doing is I'm pulling, I'm extracting everything that you guys have turned in, and if we end up staying with TaskStream, then I'll just do a big download, upload, whatever it is, whichever direction it goes, uh, into task stream for you. Uh, but like I said, we're not doing that right now just because we may change systems and go to something that is a little more hopefully user friendly, but also can do some data um, analytics for us that we're not getting out of uh, task stream right now. Okay. 
So what other questions do y'all have about the final exam? Or about the course or life or anything else? Can I make my life way too easy? I'm used to contrary high school kids who question everything. <laughs> I have one quick question. Okay. Um, I keep having a problem with turn it in for the SMART goals assignment because of the formatting. Okay. It highlights all of the the part that you put in. Yeah. My score is high. <laughs> it bothers me. But when you set the parameters, can you can it exclude that part as well? Not when I say, yeah, I, when I get to grade it, yes, I can exclude that part. I tried to exclude it as well when I set up the assignment, but it wouldn't let me do that. I can only do that part when I'm grading it. So okay. don't get freaked out about, you know, your, um, your percentage or your number being really, really high. Uh, I, I understand what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, well, um, what I'm going to do, one last thing too, is uh, it seems like a lot of people have really enjoyed and liked the resources, because, uh, you know, one of the things that I always appreciated when I was doing my master's degree was when professors, uh, who particularly those who were practitioners as well, not just living in the ivory tower of college for, you know, 30 years, but people are actually out there doing the work, when they would share tools and resources that they had, you know, like a, a walkthrough form or whatever. Um, so I'm going to add to module seven, just some additional stuff. Uh, and um, what I think what Dr. Perry and I talked about doing too, is we're eventually going to move that to the MEDL um, Moodle page, which right now is under construction. So that's why it's not there yet, but I'll load them there. So if you want to pull anything out, um, just do it before you lose access to the course. Uh, and then eventually, if you don't get it, don't panic or freak out. We'll eventually move all of that to the new MEDL page that, like I said, that we're working on with um, uh, Christy Weeks and some other people at the university to get up and running. Okay. Any other questions, guys? So everybody feels great about the final. Everybody's going to have an A and nobody's going to fail. Chase is done with the course. So he's already like celebrating. So Chase, I'm really impressed you're here tonight. That's awesome. Anything else guys? Okay. Well, we're going to adjourn extra early tonight. So those of you that haven't finished with your final exam, you've got a good 45 minute block if your family expects you to be locked away for a while. Um, and if, if you do have any problems or questions, it is a little crazy. Everybody's wanting advisement and we, we've enrolled a record number of new students this, at this time. So um, the best thing, if you really need something from me is text me. Uh, Cause I do respond to texts. Just text me and tell me, you know, Hey Tracy, it's so-and-so. Uh, can you, email me, call me or whatever. But right now, um, since I, they made me move offices last week, my phone is still not working. Um, so I live by text message and email right now because I don't have access to a phone. So, okay. All right, guys, well, thank you. And if I don't talk to y'all again, you guys have been awesome. I've really enjoyed, um, you know, what you guys have been writing. You guys are a super smart group and we're really lucky. You're gonna be amazing. Um, teacher and administrative leaders uh, at your school. Sorry, my dog came in here. Uh, so like I said, I feel really privileged and honored to get to work with you. Um, and then I'm also teaching EDL 710. So if you're in the MEDL program, I'll see you again in that course. But if you're in MEDCI, um, you know, I'll see you around graduation because you got to let me know when you're getting close because I do all your checkout work. Okay. Um, Oh, my number here. I'll put it in here again for everybody. It's, I still have a Dallas number. Okay. Let me give you my office number too. <laughs> if the phone ever works. I don't know what it is about me and technology and this university. We just don't seem to get along. Okay. Oh, thank you guys. Okay. All right, well, have a great night and um, best, best of luck. Thank y'all.